Hi everyone, my name is Martha. I'm a sex relationship counsellor. I'm the organiser. Welcome to the Art of Teas. And uh, today's session will be recorded. Uh, Ruth is being a spotlight. So uh, she, will only, she will be the only one who will be recorded. And uh, I, if you can keep your video on so Ruth can see you and the participation. But if you prefer to keep your video off, that's fine. So there's a request to keep yourself on mute at all times until the end of the session. And that's uh, uh, 10 minutes before the end time. She will open up for Q&A. Uh, in the meantime, you can just type, if you, if you can, uh, into the chat box. Otherwise, uh, please wait uh, until the end of the session. Uh, so 10 minutes into the session, I will be locking the rooms because it's just too distracting to have to repeat things again and again for people who are late. So uh, in the best interest of this workshop, uh, the room will be locked in eight minutes time. So I'll just pass over to Ruth. Oh yeah, if anything comes up and you will need to talk with somebody, you can always contact me or the festival at support at loveabilities.org. Uh, well, one last announcement. Uh, please don't contact uh, participants outside of the festival. So you can contact them in the festival, in the chat, uh, you can ask people to reach out to you. You can uh, post in the Love Abilities Facebook group, but just not outside of the festival. We don't want people to feel violated or uncomfortable. Okay, so that's all, Ruth. Thank you. Okay, hello, everybody. Um, good morning, good day, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you, Martha, for that introduction, and thank you for having me as part of such an amazing, an amazing groundbreaking event. Um, I hope that you're all enjoying the talks and workshops so far. I know that I am, and still lots, lots more to go. Um, but I'm very honoured to be kicking off day four for you. Um, I'll just quickly explain about this hour, and then I'll start. Um, so I'm going to be saying a little bit about me, and about my background and history, and how I've come to, to be here today and what I've learned along the way on that. And then I'm gonna be teaching a practical workshop on the art of teas. I've aimed to make this as inclusive as possible. It is all gonna be seated. Um, I'm hoping that there will be something to learn for everybody. So join in as much as your circumstances allow you to, if you want to join in. If you want to just relax and enjoy and watch, that's absolutely fine as well. And then hopefully at the end, there'll be a chance for a run through of everything I've taught. So we'll do little bits along the way. Hopefully at the end, there'll be a chance to run through it all. And then for some Q and A's. I don't have any slides. You're gonna be <laughs> looking at me the whole time, but I do have a tip sheet with all the main points that I'm gonna be teaching that I'll make available in the Facebook group. Um, and that I'm sure Martha can put in the resources section as well. So that will be available. So don't feel you need to try and memorize anything or make notes on anything. So that's what's coming up for the next hour. So first of all, um, a little bit about me. So my name's Ruth Ramsey, but some of you might know me or recognize me as Solitaire. Solitaire was my stage name when I was working as a striptease artist, which I did in and around London for 12 years, just over 12 years. I started in 2002, and for me, it had been a dream since I'd been a little girl. I don't know why. Um, I can't remember how I first heard about it or how I knew what striptease was, but I'd always had this fantasy of dancing, being erotic, taking clothes off. And the first chance I had to explore that was when the London School of Striptease was opened by the amazing Joe King, who I know has been mentioned a few times already over this weekend. And I became the first of her students to go from total amateur to actually working in the industry. Very early on, I can't remember if it was in my first year or my second year, but very early on, um, I came to the attention of the Erotic Awards, which is the annual award show run by amazing, amazing Tuppy Owens, who we all know and love. Um, and I think they'd heard about me because I was talking to everyone who'd listened about how much I loved being a stripper, um, about how valuable and important and healthy I felt erotic energy was and nothing to be, certainly nothing to be ashamed about. And performers at the awards, the idea is 
they have a deeper level of feeling. It's not just about dancing and making money. There's a deeper intent behind it. So I was nominated in the Stripper of the Year category. Um, and that was how, that was my introduction to the awards. Now, at that point, I was about 26 or 27 years old. And it seems really shocking to me now, looking back, but at that point, I hadn't ever had much interaction in my life with people with disabilities. Um, I'd also never been to an outrageously sexy party, such as the Night of the Senses, which is the after party after the Erotic Awards. So this was all new to me. I'm getting goosebumps just remembering it. Um, I performed at the awards and then I found myself at this amazing, super, super erotic, sexy, gorgeous event with a total mix of people of, of all different abilities and disabilities, all having this sexy, fabulous time. So right from that moment, there was no question in my mind that because somebody had a disability meant that they were not an erotic being. Very definitely not, the, the opposite in fact. And I loved this environment. And that was the start of me being involved with the awards on and off for about 10 years. Um, whether I was nominated in Strip of the Year, I presented the award show for a couple of years, which was an amazing experience. I sat on the judging panel and a friend and I ran a charity lap dancing booth at the night of the census at the after party and raised as much money as we could for outsiders. And then also through those experiences, I met other people with the same beliefs and passions. Um, through that, I met JJ, who's on this call. No, actually, JJ, we met separately to that. Um, he was, he brought a group of deaf blind guys to a strip club I was working at, but thanks to the awards, I was totally, totally comfortable with them. Loved the fact they were there. We got talking, we ended up doing a lot of work together. Um, I think the proudest moment of my entire striptease career was dancing on stage at the Royal College of Nurses conference back in 2009, which Sue Newsom was also at, where they were deciding whether to support the concept of sex workers for people with disabilities. It was a sex and disability conference. And I danced on stage for a deaf, deaf blind client. So the audience could see how, how does that work? How does striptease for someone who's deaf and blind work? And afterwards, that gentleman explains to the audience what it meant to him to be recognized as an erotic being. So through, through all of that, there was also press coverage, newspapers and television. And in 2012, I was delighted to win my own erotic award, recognizing that decade of volunteering and involvement. So what did all this teach me? Um, I was also working full time as a stripper across a range of different venues, um, mostly to people without disabilities, but we would have a whole range of people coming in. And what I what I realized was that for me, the feeling that was created when I was performing for somebody with a disability or, for example, someone very elderly was exactly the same as the feeling of dancing for um, a very fit, athletic 20 something let's say. I was creating erotic, erotic energy within myself. I was inviting their erotic self to come out and meet mine somewhere in the air between us and we would dance together. And this transcended any physical state. And I was fascinated by this. I thought this was amazing. And it made me have a very, very strong belief that this erotic spirit and erotic energy as I say, is something independent to our physical state, is a key part of being human and something that we should all be allowed to connect with, enhance and enjoy for our health and pleasure in life, to generally raise our energy in life, um, and that this was something that should not be denied to anybody. So that informed a lot of what I did during my time dancing. I then had several years out because I met and fell in love with someone who lived in the depths of the countryside. So I left the city, left a lot of my dancing opportunities, spent several years building a happy step family, doing other things, but I desperately missed being part of the erotic world. And so now I've returned um, as a life coach specializing in the areas of sex and eroticism. And as part of that, sometimes teaching striptease because physical movement can really help us connect with and 
bring up and enjoy this erotic energy. Um, I heard about this event thanks to Charlotte, who I'm sure will be watching the video. Thank you so much. And contacted Martha to explain my background and was very delighted to be asked to do this workshop. So that's a little bit about me and about my learnings and beliefs from the experiences that I've had. So before we actually begin, I'll just say what is TEAS and what's the point of TEAS? So when I talk about TEAS um, in the context of strip TEAS or erotic dance or TEAS with erotic intent, it's about slowly building energy and anticipation of something that's going to happen in order for that to be as pleasurable as possible. If we take it out of an erotic context for a moment um, and imagine you absolutely love chocolate cake and someone has put in front of you a slice of the most incredible looking chocolate cake you've ever, ever seen, but you're not allowed to eat it for five minutes and you're going to look at it and you're going to smell it. And you're going to be imagining how that's going to taste. And then when you do actually have it, all your senses have been heightened and it's even more enjoyable to have. So what we're doing is tease, but in an erotic sense, rather than with a slice of chocolate cake. Now, you can do this for, for somebody else. Sometimes I might use the word audience just because that's, that's how I'm used to thinking and talking about, about these things. Um, it could be to an audience. It could be to one significant other. It could simply be to yourself. So my cats, the cats have gone now, but we saw one of the cats at the start. My cats are sometimes the recipients of a bit of an erotic dance, if I'm feeling like that. Um, back in my teenage years, I can remember I was given a gift of a set of coloured chiffon scarves, and I used to tie them around myself in the total privacy of my own bedroom and just dance and take them off. This is something you can enjoy and do on your own to raise that feeling of erotic energy, um, raise your life vitality overall. It's also something which you could do purely in your imagination and enjoy in that way. So I'm hoping that you will find that what I teach is accessible to everybody who's watching in one form or another. So now we are gonna start getting a bit practical. Um, if there's things I mentioned having, such as a scarf or gloves, and you don't have it, you can mime, you can imagine, or you can use anything that you do have. But the first and most important thing of all isn't actually to do with the physical body. It's to do with your thoughts and with your intent. And this was something that over 12 years of dancing, I worked it out as 20,000 stage shows or something like that. I very much realized that what I was thinking affected my audience. And that if I was thinking sexy thoughts, I saw that I connected with them so much, so much more and on a deeper level. So what we're going to do just for the very beginning now is think about some kind of erotic scenario in your head. It could just be something to do with you. If you were performing for somebody else, it could be something to do with them. One of my tricks as a lap dancer which I never shared with anyone at the time, was that whoever I was dancing for, I would think something erotic about them. And it doesn't have to be a sexual act. So it might be something romantic. I might be imagining that we were lying in a field together watching a sunset, for example. Now, as you're thinking these sexy and erotic thoughts, you can probably see my face has changed already. It's gonna show in your face. It's gonna show in your eyes. You'll probably find you're smiling yeah, um, there'll be a kind of brightening through your eyes that the other person is going to pick up on. And this is the very beginning of the tease. This is the start of awakening their erotic energy as you're awakening yours. So this is very much nothing to do with the physical body. Um, if you're not sighted, um, you could do all of what I'm gonna explain through words, through being verbal. You could convey through touch instead. So at this point, I would suggest just a still touch 
if you had your hand over somebody else's hand, but you're thinking these kinds of thoughts, they are, I believe, their erotic spirit is going to pick up on what yours is doing. So I'm going to carry on. Um, I am going to be talking about eye contact quite a lot. I don't mean to exclude anybody who doesn't have that capability. Um, adjust everything I'm going to say to your own circumstances, and I'll be more than happy to answer any specific questions at the end. So for now, we're simply thinking about something wonderful and erotic or something romantic, and this is going to be displayed in our faces. You're going to be looking at the person who you're performing for, and you see, I can't help but be smiling. I'm not going to share exactly what I'm thinking. That's all for our own private worlds. But a smile is going to put your audience at ease. It shows that you're happy to be here, comfortable to be here, and that you're looking forward to what's going to be coming next. So this is our first thing. Hold those sexy thoughts, smile. And then from there, we're going to start just a little bit of movement. So, movement, sensual movement for striptease or erotic dance um, is all based around circles. So I'm going slightly side to side, but bringing my shoulders in a slight circle. So you're simply going to adapt your own way to this. All of this can be done standing. I'm going to stay seated for the whole thing to make this as inclusive as possible. But if you are able and want to stand, you can. So we're doing a kind of figure of eight with the shoulders. And keeping on smiling, keeping on sexy thoughts. I can see on my big screen, some of you are joining in. And then we're going to come round in a circle. Keeping going with the smiling and back the other way. We're going to be keeping all of our movements slow and sensuous. And then if we come to a stop and you're going to stroke gently up one arm. When you get to the shoulder, you're going to start moving again. And then if you just keep moving as I am now, or just keep watching if you're just watching, and I'm gonna demonstrate one of the key principles, which are gonna be on the tip sheet and are gonna be repeated a lot. So if you just watch, as I begin to touch myself, I've dropped my eyes from you and to the hand. As I complete that move, I'm bringing my eyes up to connect with you again. So what that's doing, I'll show you again, is giving you as the viewer permission to look at what I'm doing and is helping you focus on what I'm doing. So, and I'm also gonna stop moving the rest of the body to allow that focus. So I'm gonna take my eyes down to what I'm doing. This is gonna direct you to look at the same place, stroking up. and then moving again. So you're gonna see repeatedly through this workshop how where you choose to look or where you choose to touch and what you do with the rest of the body at the same time, so in this instance, keeping it still, is gonna focus your viewer. You're directing their gaze with your gaze or with your movement. So we'll all do that together. So at first, we're moving, moving, figure of eight with the shoulders. But then you're going to extend an arm, put the fingertips of the other hand on the wrist, look in the direction of those fingertips and watch as you're stroking up. We're going to do a second stroke, so fingertips down to the wrist again. And what we're saying to our viewer here is, oh, I'm touching myself and it feels wonderful. And imagine if I'd let you do this or if I was doing this to you and then move again. And I've just remembered. Something I missed at the start, if you're doing this for somebody else, you're going to let them know before you begin. I'm looking forward to giving you this gift 
and I'd like you to watch and you're not allowed to touch until I say you can. And then they know they're just gonna sit and watch. They know it's something you're doing for them and that they can just watch and enjoy it, but not allowed to touch. So we're gonna do that one more time. Extend the arm, fingertips of the other hand on the wrist, stroke up. And then we're moving again. I'm gonna keep things quite tame in this workshop, but if you're doing this uh, just on, on your own or for a uh, special person, let's say, you could make it as explicit as you like in terms of where you were touching. Okay, so we're gonna bring an accessory in. So if you'd planned to, to do a tease performance with someone, um, you might have been able to arrange beforehand something like a scarf around your neck. Um, I've also got some gloves and a boa. Oh, and Martha, I can see, has got a fan. Wonderful. Now, the principles are the same, whatever your accessory is. So if you don't have a scarf, um, but if you want to pretend you've got one in order to join in, then do. So we're going to move. Let's come round in the circle again. So coming back forwards and of course you can do this whether you're a girl whether you're a guy whatever you identify with so next I'm going to bring your attention to my accessory so I'm going to stop moving the rest of the body and I'm going to look down to help direct your gaze I'm just going to play for a moment so I'm kind of signposting this is what's coming next but I'm not giving it to you straight away so maybe I'll take attention away from it again. Do something else for a moment. But then when it is time, I'm gonna very slowly undo the bow. I'm stroking down the satin. Like all oh, this feels lovely. Imagine if you were feeling this. And then Slowly, slowly undo the knot. You can't do things too slowly with a tease. You could go too fast, but you can't go too slowly. And then I'm gonna pull. So yeah, Martha, you can be stroking yourself with the fan. You can be peeping over the top. And then you can bring yourself into a performance. So if you were, into something like a bit of kink. With this, I might pretend to blindfold myself for a moment. I might wrap it like handcuffs around my wrist for a moment. So it's teasing, it's playing, it's putting ideas, suggestions into your viewer's mind. When I'm done with it, I'm gonna throw it towards you as my audience, okay? I'll show you um, gloves as well. I bought a variety of things so I could see in case anyone on the call had the same. Martha, I've only got these big fans, which might be a bit much. Um, so if you want to join in, let's all pretend we've got gloves. And you'll begin to see how the same principles work through everything we're doing. So I'm going to signpost first. So I'm drawing your attention to what I'm going to do next. Oh, she's going to take the gloves off. She's going to take the gloves off. But then I'm not actually going to do so yet. Let's use, use our space. The arms up. Oh, a nice little thing that I didn't include at the start is a stroke down the side of your own face. So we can all do that. And then pretending we've got gloves. So very classic stripper move. You're going to loosen the end of the fingertips. And then hold the end with the other hand. And pulling it off. And then we're going to twirl it around in the air a bit. And again, throw it 
to our audience member. And then I'm gonna exaggerate the fact I've now got bare skin on this hand. So I'm stroking the gloved hand over the now bare hand. And then I'm gonna take the other glove off. This time we're gonna use our fingers. So you're gonna loosen the end of the gloved fingers. Slowly, slowly slide the hand out of the second glove. You could use the satin of the glove to stroke your skin. And then again, we're gonna be getting rid of that towards our audience. Okay, so we'll just have just a moment's break. So you can see that you're signposting what you're going to do, but then making your audience wait. So this could be done standing as well. As I keep saying, I'm going to stay sitting. Um, but try and use as much of your space as you have access to. If you were standing, you could come in closer to whoever you were performing for. If you're performing for somebody else, take yourself further away again use the room, um, use whatever mobility you have to fill the space. Okay, let me just check how I'm doing time-wise, yeah. So we're gonna learn how to take a blouse or shirt off. And it's again, a lot of the same principles so first of all, you're going to find something unique about you to enjoy. So I'm going to stroke my hair. What is it about you? Maybe you know you've got wonderful lips. You might want to close your eyes, take a fingertip across your lips. This is increasing your own awareness. As we learnt in one of the talks, um, on Friday about primary, secondary, tertiary erotic areas. The lips are one of your primary areas. If you're performing for somebody else, this is really gonna focus their attention in on, oh wow, look at how they're touching their lips. Am I gonna get to touch their lips? Imagine how that would feel if they were doing that to me. If you have long hair, you could take that out. I'm gonna keep mine back so that everything I'm doing is more clearly seen. But yeah, finding something about ourselves that we feel is special. And then we're gonna come to the blouse or shirt. So you can mime if you like. So I'm running my fingers up and down the line of buttons. So again, I'm signposting, this is coming off. And I could probably do this for quite some time and hold your attention because you know at some point I'm going to stop and I am taking this off. So take your time with things. And then when we start undoing buttons, you're going to undo from the bottom working up. So this might be the opposite to what you would do in day to day life. But if you start from the top, the blouse or shirt falls open as you're undoing the, the next ones down and you don't have as much control over what you're, what you're showing. <laughs> Whereas if we start from the bottom, so you can join in or you can pretend. As you can see, the top is all staying covered. So I've got control over that. I'm looking down to give you permission to look as well. And after the top button, I'm not going to open the shirt straight away. I'm stroking the bit of bare skin that I've revealed. And again, I could take quite some time doing this. I might look like I'm going to open it, but then close it again. Might make you wait. I might tell you not yet, waving my fingers in the air. Now, at this point, if it's possible for you, you want, and if you're performing for somebody else, you want to turn your back. So if you're standing, obviously you just turn around. Um, if you're in a wheelchair, that you can move around, you would move around. 
I'm just going to turn myself around on the stool I'm sitting on. If you can't turn away, don't worry, because I've got a very, very little cool trick to share with you instead, which in some ways is even more fun than what I'm going to do now. So if it's possible, obviously, if you're watching, just pretend. Otherwise, you're not going to see the screen. You're going to turn yourself away. And then slowly, slowly taking one off, then the other. You'll notice I'm turning around to give you eye contact because if I spent a while just looking away from you, um, it can be quite alienating. So I'm making sure I'm keeping the contact. And then I'm going to take one off. Um, so I have one arm. Um, out of the shirt, I'm extending the other one, taking it off, and then I'm going to let it drop to the floor. So now I've got my back to you in my bra. But before I turn round again, I'm going <laughs> to let me run round, put my hands across. So the viewer's thinking, oh, she's going to take her shirt off. I'm taking it off, but I'm still not letting you see anything. So at this point, we're going to just pause for a moment. If you're not able to turn around or if your mobility means that it's a bit awkward for you to take something off, I'm going to pop my shirt back on again to show you. Um, if you don't feel you could do it in a slinky, sensual way, yeah, then what you could do, so I've got my shirt back on. I've got just a strip of skin showing. So at this point, I would say to you, as my audience, close your eyes and keep them closed until I say you can open them. And so don't, don't, <laughs> don't actually shut your eyes, but imagine if I was performing for you, you knew I was about to take this off and then I'm making you shut your eyes, yeah? Whilst your eyes were shut, I could then take this off in whatever way I needed to or even, I guess, get someone else to take it off for me. So it doesn't have to be slinky and sensual, and I don't need to have my back turned. And then when I'm here, I then say, you may open your eyes. So that's just a little idea if you can't turn your back, or as I say, if your movements, if you don't feel that your movements are able to be as slow and sensual as you might like. So from here, again, we're extending the T's, I might look like I'm going to show you and then change my mind again. But when we finally do reveal, we're going to make it a nice big movement. And I've taken my eyes away from yours and I'm going to pose just for a moment to give you full permission to look and enjoy. Yeah. If I kept my eyes on you, you're going to feel that you need to keep eye contact and you're not gonna necessarily look where you want to look. Whereas if I take my eyes away, we're gonna pose and be still for a moment. That's giving you permission to look where you like. That's where we are leaving the removing of clothes for this workshop. But hopefully you can see those same principles would apply, if you're able to stand and take more off, would apply to taking a skirt off, Trousers are quite difficult to take off. Um, if they're baggy ones, you can just let them drop and then step out of them. But it would be the same thing. Signposting what you're about to do. Be that a zip on a skirt, be that um, back of a bra. If you have something elasticated, playing with the elastic. Signposting, making them wait a little bit more or making yourself wait a little bit more if you're doing this just purely for yourself. And then slowly, 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 a slow reveal. And then allowing your audience that moment to absolutely look and enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I'll just quickly add in here. When I was dancing for um, deaf blind audience members, it would be about textures rather than visuals. So um, an interpreter or friend such as Jimmy would be signing on the palm saying what I was doing. Now she's turned around, um, there's a zip on her skirt and I would come close so that 
that person could feel the zip. Now she's going to undo the zip. I would undo the zip and let them feel how the fabric was coming apart and there was now bare skin. Um, textures of clothes would be more important than looks, obviously. Uh, so I remember one performance I did for JJ's friend Jimmy, where I was in a very garish leopard, velvet leopard print dress, purple satin gloves, because they were my slinkiest gloves, but it was all about the textures. So as I took things off, I put them in his lap and let him feel what they were. Um, I was wearing stockings, so um, he was able to feel what the attachments were like and learn what stockings were and how they came undone. And so that was a striptease in a, in a sensory way rather than a visual way. And then just one other thing I'll share before we put stuff back on and run through the whole thing was I was once asked to do a verbal striptease for a radio programme. And that was wonderful. Um, it was pre-recorded, but I remember I recorded it with my eyes closed and created this character in my mind. Who was she? How was she moving? What was she wearing? And spoke through this character doing this wonderful striptease. So there are lots of different ways in which this can be adapted with the same principles. So making your audience wait, whether you're talking verbally, whether you're doing this as a, as a sensory performance, signpost what you're going to do, make them wait for it, then very slowly give it to them and then let them enjoy the results. So what we're going to do, if you are taking part, I'm going to pop my shirt back on and we're just going to run through that whole thing. Now, usually I would be performing to music and I would be performing um, in dimmer lighting. Um, but obviously for the purposes of this workshop, depending on who I was performing for, but for the purposes of the workshop, we wanted to make it as clear as possible. So play whatever sexy music you've got in your head. <laughs> be thinking of your sexy scenario in your mind. I'm just going to grab my scarf again for my neck. Um, oh, and we didn't add in actually the very end. So we stopped at taking shirt off, which is fine. But at whatever point you ended your performance, so whether you ended totally naked, wherever it was, you would end in some kind of pose and then say something like, that was for you. I hope you enjoyed that now you may touch me and then that's the end of your performance so we're going to run through the whole thing so bring some kind of sexy thoughts into your head feel how that change how that how that just changes your energy as the first thing let alone then changes your expression okay and if you're performing just for yourself, you could do a lot of this with your eyes closed and just feel your way into it. If you're performing for someone else, you're gonna be directing towards them. So let's start with our chin slightly dropped. Think about some kind of sexy fantasy. And then if you're imagining you're performing to someone else, you're gonna lift your face to them, you're going to smile. If you're able to make eye contact, you're going to make quite intense eye contact. And then we're going to be slowly bringing some movement in. So I'm just swaying side to side, keeping smiling. And then let's come more into a figure of eight movement with the shoulders. And whatever you're doing, whether you're seated, whether you're standing, just think about circular movements. So we're just doing upper body, but 
you're standing, circular movements with your hips. Now we're going to go around in a big circle with the upper body. And smiling. Oh, and I've just remembered if we're performing for someone else, we didn't say, I'm doing this for you. I hope you enjoy it. You're not allowed to touch me until the end. So <laughs> let's carry on with the circles again. And we're going through all this quite quickly. Obviously, you can spend as long as you like over this at home. So we're going to extend one arm. We're going to bring the fingertips of the other hand to the wrist. We're going to watch as those fingertips stroke up the arm. What we're conveying is this touch feeling wonderful. Imagine how soft my skin would feel if you were touching me like this. Imagine how it would feel if I was touching you like this. And then when the fingertips get back to the shoulder, we're going to come back to some sensual movement again. So figures of eight with the shoulders. Circles again, if you can remember which way you were going last time, <laughs> go a set the different way this time. We're going to stroke down the side of the face. So tilt your head to one side, take your fingertips from the top of your forehead, close your eyes as you do this, stroking down the face, down the side of the neck. You can carry on down, be as naughty as you like, you can carry on down and end with your hand against your nipple if you like. And then we're gonna just move again. If you want to do a performance, then in terms of music, slow music is always easier. And then we're gonna signpost our accessory. So you can use whatever you actually have, or if you want to mine, you could mine gloves, you could mine a scarf. We're going to signpost first. So touch it, stroke it, bring your attention and your viewer's attention to it. But then we're not going to go to it straight away. So another movement. So I'm choosing to bring my arms up, 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 up and over my head. Pose for a moment. And then coming back down again, returning to the silk scarf that's around my neck. So with whatever accessory you're using, very slowly remove it. So for me, I'm slowly undoing the bow. I'm holding the ends taunt with my fingers and with the free hand stroking, stroking up and down the satin. Bringing my hands back to where it's around the neck and very slowly, very, very slowly, I'm doing the knot. I'm holding either end open for a moment just to emphasize this was closed and now it's open. And a little bit of swaying movement, but then keeping my body still again as I slowly pull from one end of the silk scarf, pulling it around my neck, slowly down until it's free in both of my hands. Now I'm going to be a little bit naughty for a second and pretend I'm blindfolding myself with it to put naughty ideas into my viewers' minds. I'm going to catch it between my teeth. And then we're done with that, so I'm going to slowly roll it up into a little ball and then I'm going to throw it to you as the viewer. And then I'm going to stroke where that's just been. So I'm stroking my now bare neck, emphasising, look at this bare skin where that scarf was. So if you had gloves that you've removed, you'd be stroking your now bare hands. So a bit more movement. So again, we're seated. If you were able to, you could sway your legs side to side. If you're standing, use your space, move around the room. Now, I can feel that one of my bra straps is falling down. If something goes wrong, so to speak, with that, everything is easily correctable 
with deliberate movement and a smile. So I reached into my blouse, put that bra strap back up, patted it back in place and continuing. I'd literally fallen off a stage before. <laughs> and as long as you smile, that conveys confidence, happiness, that everything is okay and allows your audience to think everything's okay. So now we're gonna take the blouse off. So I'm running my fingertips up and down the buttons. So again, I'm signposting. This is what's gonna be coming next. But then I'm not gonna give it to you straight away. So a bit more movement, you can stroke your chin. Stroke up the side of your face, arms above your head to pose. But then we are then going to remove the shirt. So remember, we start with the bottom button so that the top stays closed. I'm looking down, slowly undoing one button at a time. So if, for example, you were fumbling over a button or a button got stuck, all you'd have to do is look up, give a little smile, maybe a little oops kind of grin and carry on and when we've undone the top one we're then going to pause expose that strip of skin stroking maybe look like you're going to open but then don't close the blouse again so then at this point, if it's not possible for you to turn around, you might just want to say if you had an audience, close your eyes. But otherwise, we're going to turn our backs. But make sure you keep eye contact or give eye contact now and then to keep that connection. I've taken um, the blouse off one shoulder, off the other shoulder. Then I'm going to slide my arm out of one sleeve, I'm lifting the other arm up, holding that arm up and taking the blouse off from that side, holding it for a second. So you know I'm gonna drop it, but I'm making you wait for a moment and then dropping. I'm gonna cross my arms back across my chest, turn back round again. And then again, make you wait for a little while. But then when I am ready to show, we're gonna do a big movement, big reveal, head back, eyes closed, going into a pose. And then we're ending here. So I'm gonna bring my arms back to where they came, to the knees. I'm gonna blow you with my audience a little kiss and say, thank you, now you may touch. And at that point, if you've been performing for someone else, they're gonna to wanna to rush over to you as quickly as possible and grab you and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> so that's our workshop. Um, I hope that that was, I hope that that was fun, enjoyable. I hope you learned from it. And I hope you saw that the principles are actually quite simple and they can be adapted in, in lots and lots of different ways. Um, I'm gonna put my blouse back on as I'm talking. We've got another 10 minutes. We've got time for Q&As, which is great. And I will put the tip sheet in the Facebook group. And Martha, I'll also send it to you to go in the resources section. Um, Martha, if you could put my website, Ruth Ramsey, with an A, ruthramsey.com, in the chat. Um, my email is ruth at ruthramsey.com. Um, if any of you have got any questions that you don't want to share in the 10 minutes of Q&A that we've got now, um, questions or thoughts or, or anything you want to share, don't, don't hesitate for a moment to reach out to me one-to-one -one and I will help in any way I can. So I'm now going to come a bit closer to the screen so that I can see the chat box. Um, Martha, if you can keep an eye on the time. And right, so you, uh, we can take everyone off mute. Thank you for all staying on mute during that. And has anybody got any questions? Congrats. <laughs> so do you have any advice for men movements? Because this was like how woman moves for a man. 
Do you have any mm. advice how would men move for women? Well, my advice on on all the movement would be very much let it come from what is within you. Okay. Um, however, classically for a guy, if you imagine, um, well, I'm imagining James Bond or similar taking taking a shirt off. Yeah. So maybe there would be a flick out of the arm and wrist and then undoing a cufflink slowly, mm-hmm. throwing that cufflink to the side, um, opening the, not collar, what's this bit? <laughs> the bit at the wrist of the shirt. Maybe undoing a shirt would be quite a snappy, quite fast kind of movement. So I, I guess I would say things would be faster and snappier. Probably mm-hmm. more of a play between fast movement and then absolute stillness. So if if you're moving for someone in any way and then suddenly you're still, they'll they'll probably almost hold their breath waiting for, oh, what's he about to do next? Um, I will share something I saw at my very first erotic awards actually. There was a male stripper there who was in a kind of army get up yeah. and he had these laced boots. And I was thinking, because obviously as a stripper, I was thinking as a stripper, how is he going to get these items off? I was like, how on earth is he going to get those boots off? And what he did was go up to a table of ladies. Tuppy, I don't know if you'll remember this. Don't know if I can do this with a tight skirt on. (laughs) And he slammed his boot down into the middle of this table. (gasps) And all the ladies are watching. And he slid out of the side of it a knife and he proceeded to cut one at a time the laces of these boots. And so he could then just take his hand out and leave the boot on the table. So it was sharper, faster movements, but then interspersed with that stillness to help build the audience's anticipation. Um, But ultimately, it's whatever movements come from within you. Uh, There are amazing uh, female strippers who have much sharper, faster kind of movements than what I do. Listen to how you truly want to move. There are male strippers who are very, very fluid and sensual. It's about you being yourself and moving in a way that feels true to you. So I hope that answers that one. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks. Can I can I add something, even though I'm not a striptease performer? Uh, I think a lot of men are very concerned about look, looking too feminine or CC, but I think they forget that they have a different body with less curves. So even though they, they, they are, their movements are uh, less, less uh, flowy, uh, even they try to do the movements of striptease, it's already really sexy. I, I don't know whether it makes sense. It's, it's basically just about the slowness and enjoying yourself and not worrying about looking feminine. Because I think the most secure people don't worry about things like that. They just allow mm-hmm. themselves to enjoy themselves. Okay, anyway. I'm not, I'm not the presenter. Okay, there is a question. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you. So, and a question. Uh, first of all, I love your workshop. My question is, how can I overcome the shyness of doing a strip tease to my boyfriend? Okay, so it is totally, totally natural to feel shy and to feel nervous, yeah? And what I would say is, first of all, focus on what you're doing for him and why you're doing it for him. So rather than thinking, is he gonna enjoy it? What do I look like? Is he gonna think it's silly? Do I look sexy? Instead, think about what you're doing for him. You are expressing your love, you're raising his erotic erotic energy, you're raising your own, try and keep your focus on that. But then if you're feeling shy, work that into your performance. So it's not that you, 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 you are yourself. You are not pretending to be some super confident, um, you know, super confident erotic goddess stripper. You're being you. So if you're shy, and obviously he knows and loves you, it might be that when you're undoing things, you're very, very slow with occasional little looks up. Um, it, yeah, everything can be slowed right down. You can, you can verbalize it. You can say, um, I'm feeling really shy, but I really want to do this for you. 
and he knows you. He's not, he's not expecting and isn't wanting to see someone else. Um, so just take it very slow, be authentic. Any, any little thing you do, even if all you did was remove a pair of gloves for him or something, is gonna be so, so special and so beautiful. Don't think you need to do an entire 10 minute striptease performance at the start, you know, for, at, at the very beginning. Just take little steps and use your shyness as part of your performance. I hope that helps and, 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 and enjoy it, enjoy it. Yes, uh, so I also like to add uh, 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 what I posted there, which is, you know, you can also fake shyness if you're not a very shy person, because that's part of the game. <laughs> So sometimes I would I would say, oh, I, I, I don't really do this, you know, uh, but I'm doing it for you only because I, I love you so much. Who cares, yeah. you know, <laughs> as long as it works. <laughs> okay, have, it's, um, we've got like two more minutes if there's any final questions. Or as I say, feel free to reach out to me one to one afterwards for questions. Thank well, you, everybody. If, if there is no one, if I could ask one more. Of course. Uh, thank you. So usually women say there is no chemistry when I meet them. Uh, if, maybe if I know this is maybe off the topic, but maybe you can say some advice for me. Maybe you have some advice. So was that they say there's, there's low chemistry? There is no, no chemistry. No chemistry, no chemistry. Yeah. No. Um, if, if you can find a way to sort of nurture and grow your erotic energy within yourself, and maybe it's in your head, what you've just shared with us is in mm -hmm. your head when you meet women, that this is what you've been told before. Um, so it could be that there is an expectation that you will be told that again. And so in that, for that reason, you could be subconsciously keeping your erotic energy very small. Um, there was a wonderful meditation in Sue Newsom's talk on Tantra on Friday, um, where she talked viewers through a meditation of kind of drawing up um, erotic fire and erotic energy from the center of the earth. And it was a beautiful meditation and I certainly felt the effects in my body. Um, I'd really recommend that you go and listen to Sue's talk and listen to that. And it's yeah. something that you could practice um, on a regular basis to help build that, that erotic fire within yourself and then learn how to hold on to that and not have that conditional on what somebody else is telling you. Understand. And then if you can take that into future meetings, I would hope that other people will sense that from you. I hope that uh, makes some kind of sense. Yes, it does. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to have a little look in the chat box. Great. Thank you. That was great and fun. Thank you, Ruth. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, thank you, everybody who who's been on this live. Um, <laughs> it's an unusual Sunday you. morning if you're watching from the UK. Yeah, and if you watch the recording, I hope that you enjoyed that as well. And thank you again, Martha, for having me as part of this. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you both. Bye. Thank you.